key concepts of application of equilibrium to cables and arches have a lot to do with the constraints under which we're doing these, these models. And <coughs> in the case that you see here, we have a cable that has some sort of uniform load uh, applied to it. Let's look at or review about what happens when it's responding to a uniformly distributed load along its length, right? such as self-weight. Right? That's a key, key, key thing here that it's uniform distributed along the length, as in the arc length. And when we get that, then we end up with a catenary expression. That's key, that the shape of this, uh, this, this cable is a catenary equation, right? as opposed to when you have a uniformly distributed load along the horizontal, such as you get in a suspension bridge. So now let's put the deck down below. I haven't shown the riser cables yet, but of course they would be going up to the cable. And if they were many of them re, uh, closely spaced relative to the overall length, we end up now with a parabolic shape and not a catenary. Although they are similar, they are not the exact same shape. And the, the key there is that when we have a uniformly distributed load along the length and we end up with a catenary shape, then we end up with pure tensile forces in this cable. Right? And then when we go to the parabolic shape, we end up with, again, pure tensile forces in the cable. But here's an interesting application. If we freeze this shape and invert it, we create an arch setting. And if we create that shape in a parabola and we have a uniformly distributed load along the horizontal, then we'll end up with pure compressive forces in that arch. Right? But if instead we were to make the parabolic shape but have only self-weight, it wants to have a catenary shape, but we forced it into a parabolic shape when we froze it. That's a problematic because we won't have just pure compressive forces. We'll end up with some bending moment along the length. Okay, so understanding these shapes are not only important about which equations we're going to pull out um, of our data bank of equations, but rather do we have to choose the right ones consistent with what kind of shape we have, whether it's in the tensile situation or whether it's in the compressive situation. And particularly in the compressive situation, then there's all kinds of host of an important and very interesting um, aspects of structural design that go along with this. Right? In the, the catenary or the parabolic or the tensile situation, the cable is pretty much going to do whatever it needs to do to get into straight pure tension and not have bending. But not in the arch situation. It doesn't have that kind of flexibility to just sort of uh, morph itself into what it needs to be to be um, in sort of its optimal uh, position, but rather instead it has to deal with the shape that we've created and then it, and it tries to do that but if it starts doing that in bending uh, we tend to have then arch stability problems.